Joining me now, Senator Chris Murphy, Democrat from Connecticut and a member of the U.S. Senate Foreign Relations Committee. Uh, Senator, you know, it strikes me that so often uh, you have a situation in which the criticisms of the president tend to focus on symbolism and rhetoric uh, rather than necessarily policy, particularly these moments in the wake of these mass tragedies. Yeah, you know, I have two thoughts on that. The first is a rumination on the word that we use to describe this tactic. This is terrorism, and we call it terrorism because the enemy is trying to strike a level of fear in Americans that actually isn't commensurate with the actual threat that we face. They're trying to terrorize us. And so the question is, what do you want from an American leader? I would suggest that you want an American leader who's actually going to use the kind of rhetoric that right-sizes the fear, that doesn't actually feed in to what the terrorists want, which is our country running around and having an irrational sized fear uh, compared to the actual threat that we face. And the second is on your point about the lack of policy differential. I mean, the fact is, is that none of the remaining Republican presidential candidates actually have any substantial differentiation from the president when it comes to how we fight ISIS. None of them are proposing to put in 100,000 new troops. None of them could be bombing at any greater rate than the president is. Their only differentiation is is a suggestion that we should engage in the unconstitutional discrimination against a religious minority. But aside from that, there really isn't any difference. And so I think that that's something that they try to mask by drawing contrasts simply on symbols. There's also, I think, this sense uh, right now, particularly with, with respect to policy in the Middle East, and, and particularly as it pertains to Syria, where you know, the president famously had an advisor who said the, 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 the motto for the administration is don't do stupid stuff. And, and then, you know, he was criticized for that. And even Hillary Clinton at one point said not doing stupid stuff doesn't amount to a foreign policy. There is a sense of it does feel untenable what's happening right now. I mean, even if you just look at the refugee crisis in Europe, extend this out. This war keeps going on. It keeps churning through hundreds of thousands of dead and spreading uh, jihadism around the globe. I mean, is, what are we doing to inter Can we interrupt it? Yeah, well, listen, I know it's not satisfying to be told by the president of the United States that this is a long, hard slog. But what we are trying to do is learn from our mistakes where we thought that a quick hit, whether it be against the Taliban in Afghanistan or against Saddam Hussein in Iraq, was enough. Um, we unfortunately didn't do it in a means that it was effective in long term. And the reality is we have pushed back ISIS uh, over the course of the last year. They have 30 percent less territory than they do today. And if you read reports, we are on the precipice of knocking them out of Mosul, which is their historic headquarters. Now, of course, this actually necessitates that they bring the fight to places like Europe, and they try to go to right. us into uh, feeding this narrative that the East is at war with the West. Um, but we're trying to do this right, even if it takes a little bit longer than people would like, and learn from the lessons of when we had quick strikes that were satisfying at the outset, shock and awe, that actually made us less safe in the long run. Yeah, it's interesting you note that because um, one of the things that, that, that folks have been telling me, and, and there's a great interview with an ISIS defector about this actually being a strategic turn away from the battlefield in Iraq to do these kinds of attacks. Uh, and, and, and that's, in some sense, is terrifying, but also signifies that they're having a harder time in their home base. No consolation here, but there are two narratives that are critical to ISIS's continued growth. One is inevitable growth, physical, geographic growth of the caliphate. And second, the idea that Islam is at war with Christianity. That first narrative isn't available to them like it was before because their territory has dramatically shrunk. And so the second narrative is now more important than ever. Right. Thus, they are hoping, they are praying that we make stupid moves in the wake of these attacks in Europe so that they can say, see, this is really about our religion. This is really about them trying to get us. We can't fall into that trap. All right, Senator Chris Murphy, thank you so much for your time tonight. I really appreciate it.